guys Megan here welcome back to my channel today I'm going to be sharing with you a bit of a different video but essentially a while back I want to say about a year ago I made a video about how I make my study guides and that got a ton of great responses it's one of my most popular videos on my channel so if you want to check that out I can link it down below or up above but essentially I figured I kind of redo that video and kind of show you guys an updated version of what I like to do um, and kind of focus in more on one class. This is kind of just like my study routine and what I like to do to prepare for an AP chemistry test and the reason I'm showing you guys chemistry is because by far AP chemistry out of all of my honors and AP courses I've taken over the past four years AP chemistry is the hardest class I've ever taken and so like literally I failed the first two tests like it's that bad um, and so the past three tests I've actually gotten all A's on which is awesome but honestly I think I credit it to the studying routine that I've kind of implemented so if you guys kind of like studying and school videos like this give it a thumbs up I really do like making these but I don't want to make them if you guys don't want to watch them and also if you're new I invite you to subscribe down below for more content like this and also lifestyle content and I upload every Sunday and let's get right on into the video okay so my first step for making any study guide really is to compile all the notes and all the practice problems so I like to kind of separate them out but basically what I do is kind of take Take all the notes from that one unit so the unit that we're on right now that I'm studying for is acid base equilibrium and buffers and all that stuff so I just compiled all that stuff into this folder this is just like a flimsy manila folder you can use whatever you want the reason I use a folder and it's actually really worked well for me is if I have like 10 minutes at the end of math class for example two periods before AP chemistry and it's just like free time I can just pull out the folder and all my stuff is there rather than have to go search through my binder and it just makes me feel a lot more at ease knowing that like if I have a question I can just take out the folder real quick rather than having to go searching it's literally just a convenience thing also my brain kind of works like if everything's all together I can see it all together and it will make sense so for me putting everything in a folder first really helps Oh, also, if you are an AP Chem student, shout out to you because AP Chemistry is a grind, but I have two websites that I highly recommend. First of all, Blue Devil Chem is phenomenal. They have a bunch of great multiple choice practice problems, very similar to the ones on our test and therefore the AP, because our tests are literally like mini AP tests, um, so that's why they're so stressful. Um, but also, another website I recommend is NIMSI, which is the National Math and Science Institute. It is the best website ever. Renee McCormick is the woman who does the screencasts for the notes that we use and I just love hearing her teach it and then hearing my teacher teach it because it kind of it definitely overlaps but it's kind of different hearing two different people talk about it so it really ingrains the information into my brain but also the National Math and Science Institute has so much information on just like literally everything like I just went to a calculus review session the other day and they use NIMSY stuff so literally if you're in any math or science class especially upper level that website is so so helpful for lectures screencasts like or practice problems like anything it's awesome and then what I like to do before I even make the study guide is once again like I said I love to have everything out laid out in front of me so what I like to do is just take a little post-it note or a little sticky note and just write down everything that I need to study just for my own peace of mind so that I know hey I'm not forgetting anything like this is all I need to study and once I'm done or understand it I just check it off makes me feel great um, and it's nice to see kind of your progress and also if like you're like stressed about one topic or something you can kind of circle it and write questions next to it I'll get to that later also make sure that you're devoting the right amount of time to the subjects that you need because you don't want to study something that you already know a bunch rather than spending time on something that you're weaker on so it really helps me to kind of make sure that I'm focusing on everything as much as I need to. So depending on how much time I have to make the study guide, I either use my legal pad, which I, I love my legal pad. I either use my legal pad or a piece of printer paper. Today is a weekend, so I'm going to use a piece of printer paper because I think it looks prettier and whatever. But if I'm studying for a quiz or anything, I'm really not going to use the printer paper because ain't nobody got time for that usually I study the night before for those these are pretty much the same just the one I'm going to be showing you today is just going to be a lot prettier than the legal pad ones but all the same information you know so a few things that I like to personally keep in mind when I'm making the study guide to kind of make sure I'm doing it the right way first of all this is condensed information from your notes but you don't want to just rewrite the notes verbatim you want to write it in a way that you're going to understand it whether that is a weird mnemonic 
or a weird list of steps or maybe you like rhyme it with something else I don't know whatever works for you do it and don't be ashamed in like doing a weird mnemonic I use mnemonics all the time they're amazing really helps me um, and you should also write it and organize it so that you understand it because this is in the end it's your study guide it doesn't matter what it's like no one else is gonna read it just make it how how it works for you and personally for me which kind of goes into my next tip I like to put everything in chronological order and by that I just mean the order that I learned it in. If I kind of can remember the order and be like, hey, I know this problem, you know, this was about like this day, here's what I have to do, that personally works really well for me and it really helps to make sure that you're starting from beginning to end and so maybe you don't need to focus so much on the stuff that you did two days ago or maybe your content increases in difficulty so the stuff you did two days ago is actually the hardest but first in order to do that content you need to relearn just the basics so I like to personally put it in chronological order I think that it really helps um, my brain to create a timeline when I'm actually taking the test and then also the way that I like to make sure that I know conceptual things especially for multiple choice or explanations in the FRQs is to kind of write a list of conceptual topics at the end of each section of the study guide and that just makes sure that I understand the like the conceptual things and that I can kind of put it all together before the test so that while I'm taking the test and I'm like oh I wonder if this connects this way I can kind of make sure that I know the connections before I actually take the test. Even though every problem is kind of different on the AP exam, I really like to write out the steps of how to solve something, and especially I'll take sometimes key phrases from FRQs if this says molar solubility, I write out all the steps that I know when I see that, like, hey, I need to calculate the molarity, which means I have to have in moles and liters and whatnot, so kind of listing those key phrases with the steps really helps your brain to make the connection and so if you run into that on the AP exam at least you know how to do that part so you can maybe apply it to the other parts of the problem. Once you've created the study guide that is great but you're really not going to be able to study enough unless you one review that study guide but two do practice problems and I don't know why but I like kind of avoided this the first like two tests because I was like oh like I like I know how to do the problems it's fine you don't know if you know how to do the problems until you do the problems without the answer key and then you don't know how to do them. You would rather have that happen before the test than while you're actually taking the test. This is why I love that Blue Devil Chem site because I just go through a ton of the multiple choice. They're very similar to ours and so it forces me to be like, oh my gosh, I don't know how to do this math in my head. Let me make sure I learn how to do that before the test. Or like those Nimsy ones, they have a bunch of FRQs that we use, so I'll either rework old ones or work new ones and just make sure you don't look at the key because I know I do that all the time. I'll be like, oh, I'll just check the key and then the key's up and then you're working and then you get stuck and you happen to glance up and the key's right there. So that's not going to happen on the test, so I suggest like just having your computer or phone like far away so you can't even access the key until the very end when you're done working the problem you can go through and grade it like an AP exam grader would and you can kind of really see how well you're doing. As for other resources I love this five steps to a five book it's kind of like an AP review book. I personally like to read through the summaries especially the night before the test if I just have like five minutes before bed I'll read it kind of let the information sit and I'll go to bed and that's really great just to kind of summarize all the information and also if you're trying to practice for the AP itself it has like two practice tests I want to say which is awesome for preparing. I am a very question oriented person and so if I think of a question I'm always like oh my gosh what if that's on the test and I don't know how to do it on the test but then I knew I didn't know how to do it and then I asked the teacher. All right. It's kind of irrational, but it's happened before, so it's definitely a valid concern. So what I like to do is just make a list of all the questions that I have, and I just go in the next morning before the test and just talk to the teacher and be like, hey, how do you do this? And just like jot down like two word answers or ask whether or not this topic's gonna be on the test, etc. Having all those questions listed out really just gives me peace of mind. Once again, that's kind of what this whole process is doing, is just giving me peace of mind. And it shows me like what I don't know and also like what I need to focus on. And it just makes me feel better having all the questions in one place. So yeah, I'm kind of crazy. So actually saying all this out loud kind of makes me realize that this is a lot of work but it's literally just this class that I try this hard for. I really don't study for more than a, the night before for any other test besides AP Chem, and it's just because of the sheer amount of information and the stuff that I have to do to just make me feel prepared and confident while I'm taking the test. But if you guys did like videos like this, give it a thumbs up or even subscribe down below if you're new. I make new videos every Sunday, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.